Sound. Sounds rolling. Can you? Uh, Clapper. Well, I'm kind of holding. Description slate. Uh, podcast. Joy. Is take it? one and final. Can you? Someone give me a clap. Is this the podcast? Yeah, podcast. This is the interview series thing. Okay. Yeah. So, interview podcast. Yeah. The movie theaters. I oh, need no, one no, ticket, that's my please. seat. One ticket oh. just for one person. Just kidding, there's two. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Eliza. That's Eliza. I'm sorry. I need one ticket, please. One ticket just for one person. I would like to see a sketch where she does that. That's, that's great. Wait, go to go over here. She's so cute. She's so funny. <laughs> she called me last night. Gave me the cutest messages ever. You you can call people on Instagram now. Really? Yeah. People can just video so, chat you. Uh, it's a thing. We already clap, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Safety class. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Ooh, it's dangerous. Uh, oh, that's clapping hot. Nice. Yeah, it's really hot. <laughs> Is what? Oh, it's that. Really it's hot. Sizzle there. Yeah. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Got a sweaty cup. I'm gonna set my little timer so I know what, what the fuck. Is what are all these on. toys on here? For? It's just props. I no, like them. For no reason. <laughs> Uh, but let's let's put it. You let's know, go there. Yeah, just so it looks, you know, good on camera. It's a aesthetic I've been establishing for six episodes straight. Oh, okay. Oh. Alrighty. Hi guys, I am Steve Des, and I'm Christina Cropper, and we're Dream Press Productions, and we have a lovely guest today for all you guys. Uh, she is not only an actress, she's a screenplay writer, comedian. Uh, personality, uh, all sorts of incredible things. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> give it up for Genevieve Joy. Oh, right here in the yay, building. That's me. Genevieve Joy's here. What a lovely introduction. I, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> Genevieve, I, uh, we, we have known each other for a while now, and uh, I known you mainly how, how. We even met, which is another uh, show. That's another story That's for another, another show. For another show. Uh, <laughs> I remember uh, we had in common uh, the comedy stuff. Yes. And uh, it That's took right. a while, but we're working together doing yeah. some comedy. That's uh, right. you, done, you, you pull out Skip Town. Uh, you, by the time this airs, you've done Murder the Mic. I will have by, yeah. done Murder yeah. the Mic. That's right. Uh, so how you feeling? How was the drive here? The drive was good. I was up early, like yeah. early, early. Yeah. So and you had I'm, a show last night. I had a show last night, and yeah. I still made it happen. You made it happen. Got up, wasn't sure it was gonna happen, but it mm-hmm. did, and here we are. Is that a normal thing to wake up early, or is no? That I don't know. I am not a morning person. But here's my <laughs> thing about I have a strange theory about waking up early in the morning. What's that? I cannot wake up early in the morning unless I wake up really early in the morning. Oh, okay. Meaning, like, if I'm up at, like, 10 to 5, before the sun, I feel like I have an edge on everybody, and I'm excited. But if I wake up at, like, 7.30, I'm like, meh, screw this. Yeah, I get And I don't move until 9 or 10 o'clock. Yeah, there's something about the sunrise that makes me feel that way. Right, so it's like, it makes me feel, like, powerful or something. I don't, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's just so (laughs) insane that my body's like, (laughs) we're doing this, but I can get up at, like, 5 more easily than I can get up at 7 or 8. What makes me more powerful than anything is living in Los Angeles. That so too. What? <laughs> yeah. What made you do the move from New York to LA? Um. Well, I. <laughs> this is funny. I uh, I wanted to um, not do so much comedy. I, I I was I was living in New York and I'm from New York, so my family's all there. So I, I'm moving around because there's this thing between my legs. Yeah. I just feel like I need to let everybody know that I'm not just weird, but like there's this, there's this there's this thing between my legs, and I'm trying to keep them together. And it's it's but no one's looking down, so it really doesn't matter. This whole so section is one giant block, but I don't need to be ladylike for these purposes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm straddling the thing right. Um, 
I was living in New York. I'm from there. I was doing stand-up a lot. I was not working as an actress at all, which is what I wanted. And then um, I kind of, you know, I kind of made the decision in my head that my lease was up, and it was like if I commit to a new lease in New York, I'm not going anywhere for a very long time. So this was the time to decide what I wanted to do. And then wait, when you're out of a lease in New York, they make you sign another lease. Oh, yeah. You don't get month to month ever? I, I don't know. I, I mean, I... No. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't... I mean, I guess I could have, but... I wasn't going to move twice. I wasn't going to, like, move. They were raising the rent, so I was going to leave that spot. Okay, yeah. So it's like, if I was going to move, yeah. then I was going to move, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, I had I had really been toying with the idea of coming to L.A., and God, it's so crazy to think because it was it was a long time ago now. It's like going on six years, but then then out of nowhere, I kind of had this opportunity come you know in LA, and so I, I did. So I came out here, and the first job I got was a play, and that was great. And then that ended, and then I joined a theater company and a class and stuff, and I started doing more, and um, that's sort of how that happened. Yeah. So what made you... So when you moved originally here, you were going to leave stand-up behind. I was going to, like, semi-leave stand-up behind. I really wanted an opportunity to kind of emerge as an actress. And I felt really stuck in my rut of stand-up in New York. Like, I was like a hamster in a wheel. I wasn't really moving forward. Mm. I wasn't... I was doing the same clubs, the same people, and I wasn't really... Uh, I didn't feel like I was improving that much, and I felt kind of stuck. So I wanted to change. I also... You know, LA's cool. There was a boy here, that too. That was another factor. Um, there are a lot of stories of people moving because of. Well, it was one of, you know, it wasn't because of him, but I feel like. So I had a boyfriend in New York who moved out to LA, and we were not together, but we were like in touch, you know? So in my mind, it was true love. And um, I don't, I did definitely didn't move for him, but if, if he had been in New York, I may not have made the jump. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense? Yeah. You know, it felt like the thing that might have really tied me to New York wasn't there. My family's there, but I wanted to I wanted to leave them. I needed yeah. to move on from. Now your family, is your whole family also from New York? They're all from the everybody's East Coast. East Coast? We are East Coasters all the way. So what made your mom jump to the East Coast, to the West Coast? To the West Coast. Well my mom was uh, divorced and she was, you know, she doesn't watch this. I'll tell the truth if she's not going to watch this. So she had this guy in New York who she was seeing, right? And he wasn't committing. And um, so I think this was like a temper tantrum slash threat. And he sort of called her bluff because she was like, oh, I can't really stay in New York. And, you know, I think there's nothing keeping me here. And I think I'm going to go to L.A., you know, thinking that he'd be like, no, mm. let's get married. Right. And instead he was like, that's fantastic. I'd love an excuse to go visit L.A. So, um. So she came, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she complains every day. Every day she wants to go back to New York, and then she loves it, and then she doesn't know, and then she hates it, and she's selling her apartment, and then she loves her apartment, then L.A. is amazing, then fuck this place, and it's on and on and back and forth and, you know, whatever. But I am the opposite. I love L.A. Oof. Every day I wake up, and I'm like, I never have to leave. It's not a vacation. Mm. It's home. I love it. Yeah, I love it here, too. I, yeah. I'm... I moved out here mainly for mountains and the showbiz stuff. Yeah. And it's abundant like in that. Mountains, <laughs> ocean, showbiz. What else is there in life? Now, you and Christina as well have the unique opportunity of, like, you guys actually have family nearby. I know Christina went through the process of living with family for a while, and that didn't work out so well. It have really you, does. <laughs> have you lived with your mom before? Oh, fuck no. Are you kidding me? Are you crazy? Are you crazy? No, that's so funny because I'm like, I struggle with money and people are like, well, what about living with your mom? I'm like, I, I'd rather live in a box than with my And I spend, here's the thing, I spend a lot of time with my mom. I spend a lot of time at her place. Mm. I go over for dinner. There's a, you know, she's got a second bed, like not a second bedroom, but like a like an office room with a pull out I spend the night there yeah. that's fine but I can go it's not my home yeah, you know what I mean that there. <laughs> it's nice I mean I probably spend the night there maybe only about once a week maybe a little less but but you know enough that it's that I really like it but like she's got a pool she's got a great place 
But I'm a visitor. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't care how broke I am. That is not happening. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, would you say it's like making you have a better relationship that way? Not a better relationship. If I lived with her, she'd be dead. Like, there's no better. There's, it's not an option. I mean, no. There's a switch on her own. Yeah, you know, and, and we're really close, but, um, but no. No. Yeah, I feel you. Now, tell me about these bracelets that you have going on. Bracelets, I like... I just noticed them. I like a lot of jewelry. Do they have a meaning? Do they have, like, energy sure. to them? Do, Do they, they have energy to them? I don't know. I mean, this, this was a gift. This was, uh, this is really cool. This is actually a custom-made, like thing that uh was a gift from the the same boyfriend the one i came to la not for slash for that i've been uh is that to fight all the men that approach you on the streets no you know what it was it was because what he said when he gave it to me i always wore at the time tons and tons of bracelets right and he was like i just got you this so that like it could be one oh. so that you don't need to like put on 50 and take off 50 and like you could just just one <laughs> Just one, and then it's and then it's like boom, and then it's done, and then it's on, and then all the whole production of doing the. Ri but I liked my ritual of like putting yeah. on a million bracelets too. So. It's trying to take up that arm but, real but estate. It, yeah, but it was a nice. It was a cool gesture, and I do like it. I think it's kind of awesome. Uh, let's see. A lady on Hollywood Boulevard made me this as a gift. Wow. She was one of those. Um, she had a little thing. She sold jewelry, and she just kind of. You know what it was? I was chatting with my friend right in front of her about how I had just gotten Mother's Day and I was going to the premiere. Mm. And she said, what? And got all excited <laughs> and said, I need to make you some jewelry for your premiere. And she made me this. I did not wear this to the premiere, but I do <laughs> wear it. Yeah. And uh, both of these are from Arizona. My mom got them. And this one was a gift from my acting teacher. So that's not exciting, is it? It's not as good a story as it maybe should have been. But it is pretty. Do you ever think that they, like, do some juju to it or something? Um, I definitely think my acting teacher did some juju to this one. But I can't get it off because I, then I broke this finger. Oh, And I can't, man. I actually can't get it off. It is. That's <laughs> it's the there. Juju. It's on for good. It's like a shackle. Like, you'll never forget me and my class and... Maybe what, it's a, when you put it on first, were you able to get it off at that time? Yeah, I put it on a long time ago, and I fell, I broke my I finger, it's and it's broken. like, yeah, like this all got all screwed up and never went back together properly, and I can't get it off. Was that because of the ring? Finger push -ups? What? Was that because of the ring? No, I fell. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I hurled my body at some stairs, meaning like, I didn't mean to hurl my body at the stairs, but I was going for the stairs, and then I missed. Uh -huh. So what I actually did was just like, at full force, like, hurl Ooh. my body, at, it was a mistake. Yeah, it was bad. And because I'd never broken anything before, I was like, it's not broken. I don't oh. break things. I've never, I like, I didn't realize. And then later, they were like, I got an x-ray. They were like, yeah, this was broken, and it healed all screwy, and I was stupid. Oh, man. Later, after the fact. I know. Now, talking about mistakes, we do make a lot when we move to a town that we don't know nobody. Mm -hmm. Meaning associating with the wrong people, maybe going to the wrong projects. Do you, have <laughs> any, you have any experiences of those? Um, so my first apartment in Los... Yeah, I got a lot of those. <laughs> my first apartment... All right, I'm moving my legs again so nobody be alarmed. I have this. Okay. I'm going like, to go like this. There you go. And then I'm going to go... We're going to tell the future guests that same Yeah, tip. okay. Yeah, there we go. That's better. <laughs> um, so when I first moved to L.A., I was, um, I got a place on Craigslist. That was my first, like, probably big stupid thing to do. Well, because the boyfriend guy, he was like, oh, don't commit to a place you haven't seen. Stay with me for a little while, and then we'll, uh, you'll find something. And then he, like, changed his mind about our relationship while I was halfway across the country. So I needed a place to live on short notice. Yeah, I know. Not, not a very good guy. Um, so I needed a place, to, but he did give me this bracelet. Oh, he's the one that gave me that. Okay, now it makes sense. Connections. So, um, so, so um, I moved to L.A. I, I, I look on Craigslist and I see all these ads like, show me your boobs, rent negotiable. I'm like, no, no, no. And then I see this one that it's from a girl. It's like, roommate moved out on short notice, live on Bohini. I'm like, oh, this looks like nice. You know, it was furnished, which I needed. I had nothing. So I go to the, um, I go to the, um, place and this girl answers the door and she says she's like 30 but like 
I think she was lying. I mean, you know, but that was the beginning of like, really? She doesn't look 30. You know, maybe I'm wrong or maybe she's lying. Yeah. I, I don't know, right? This person was so, so, literally the most unattractive human being I've ever seen. It should have been a red flag. And I don't say that to be mean. I mean, one tooth like this, like hair all out there. Okay. Like she had at one point been very, very fat and then lost it all like this. And she said it was a complication from diabetes. Okay. But that's, yes. Complication with diabetes is not a thing that makes you drop a hundred pounds in a couple of months, right? So I, I, I but I, anyway, I, I just go, okay, it's a really, really like reasonable amount of money for this gorgeous building with valet and everything you could imagine, right? Pool, everything. Yeah. So I move in, and um, and very early she says to me, she's like, so do you like do drugs at all? You know, and I'm like, <laughs> no. And she goes, oh, okay. And I'm like, wait, why do you? ask she's like well you know on occasion you know i like kind of do some drugs and i'm like well, what drugs right <laughs> she was vague you yeah. know i'm like do you mean like pot i mean that's perfectly normal it doesn't bother she was well you know sometimes i do a little bit of coke and i'm like uh, okay you know i mean coke is like uh, i mean i don't do it but whatever and and then but then i had this you feel like you get a thought in your head where you're like mm, something doesn't add up yeah. because here's the thing this girl was so unattractive and she was so un... Meth. <laughs> Kyle, here's, here's where my brain went. I went, I don't think she's cool enough to have a Coke problem. Not that drugs are cool, but just hear me out. Coke is a party drug, right? Right. So in order for one to get hooked on Coke, one has to at least have been to a party at some point where Coke was being handed out, which means you have to at least be cool enough to know people who have parties, and like she wasn't. So I'm like, where, where did she ever even get introduced to Coke? Right, like that's my thinking. Cause she's like a weirdo, right? Anyway, you got it. So <laughs> what was actually going on is I would come uh, home, I would come home from being out with some friends and I would walk in the door. We're up in the project, so I seen a lot. Yeah, so, <laughs> so she's sitting there with her TV dinner tray, like watching like reruns of intervention, like, <laughs> Right, snorting up shit off the tray going, I hope you didn't drive! I've had, like, one corona. And I'm like, you're right, I'm the one with the problem, Whoa. right? So, uh, then what happened was, she told me that she had a date. And I said, uh, oh, you know, she goes, and he's really attractive. And I'm like, oh, she's like, so you should see him. Because I think she didn't think I believed her, and I didn't. So I stuck around, this guy comes to the door, and, and he was attractive, and I was shocked. <laughs> and um, they're sitting on the couch, and they're smoking out of this, well, it sort of looked like a bowl, but it was like spherical. Like it was like, you know what it was? Little glass thing with a ball on the end, right? Mm. Throw up the projects. Mm. I didn't, I'm from Connecticut. Okay, so I don't, I don't know this life. It's I didn't, a crack pipe. I did not recognize a crack pipe, okay. right? I'm like, that's an odd looking little like pot bowl thing that they have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, that's I went strange. to college someone, in upstate New honestly, York, so. someone that's completely naive could think, of, oh, it's a, it's a fancy bowl. That's what yeah, I, well, well, yeah. 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 It did not occur to me what was going on in the house. So, uh, so like they, they do a bunch of this stuff, or whatever. And he's like, "Do you want to smoke some?" And she's like, "No, she doesn't do drugs. Like I'm a loser. I'm <laughs> you know, like, right? She oh, doesn't man. even do drugs." I'm like, "Oh, you're right. I'm gonna go hang out in my room now. Bye." So he comes. It's a little while later. This guy taps on my door, and he's like, "Do you mind if I hang out with you in here?" And I'm like, "Why?" And he's like, oh, well, I'm too messed up to drive home, and I don't really want to be out there with her. Oh, man. And I said, but she's your date. Like, what do you mean you don't want to be out there with her? And he's like, no, I just met her tonight. And I'm like, I don't understand. And he's like, well, I don't actually know her. I'm like, then why are you here? And he goes, Christless. And I'm like, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Were you selling a couch? Like, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> like, what out of that? <laughs> I mean... Casual encounters. Uh, he goes, super NES? casual encounters. The, why am I... Why are no, you the one? Like, no, you're not... A, these stories are supposed to be shocking. And you're like, no, I know exactly what happened. That's totally normal. Uh, Crack pipe, meth, <laughs> casual encounters. Like, who doesn't do that? I'm invested. So, I mean, yeah, I'm from Miami. I didn't really have much of this either. Right, so I'm like... Holy, oh, wow. So I'm like, all right, 
I'm like, I have so many questions. I'm like, I really should throw you out of here because this is skeeving me out like there's no tomorrow. But, but, I'm like, if you want to stay here till you calm down off your whatever it is you're on, I'm like, you got to tell me everything because I'm fascinated. I'm like, you seem nice. You're a good looking guy. How, how did it happen to be that you were like trolling Craigslist in the night searching for my creepy roommate? Like, how? And he's like, well, I used to have a real drug problem. Used to. Yeah. Um, and I, I bottomed out. I, 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 I got divorced. I hadn't seen my son. And, like, you know, my son was taken away. It was this horrible thing. And I ended up getting help and getting through it. And now I'm a, now I'm a drug counselor for kids. This is not funny. This is terrible. Right? And he goes, and I, I've relapsed. And I don't want to go for help because I'm this close to getting my kid back. So, oh man, it's just like, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, this is the worst story I've ever heard. Like, you need to get your life together. Like, this is like, like, this is like, this is bad. Yes. Right. And that was awful. I I have no idea what happened to that guy. But anyway, things like that were happening all the time. Oh my God. That's turbulent. By the way, the kinds of people on casual encounters like, I don't know what you envision, because I never really gave it any thought, but but it's nothing like it. Whatever you envision, it's, it's, that's not it. Like, the kind, like, there was this guy who was, like, a doctor, and he was engaged, and he was, like, super normal looking, like, right? And, and I'm like, does your fiancé have any idea that you're here right now? He's like, no, she's asleep. I slipped out. In the, and there's codes on the Craigslist, like, bring 12 flowers means I'll blow you for a dollar. Like, I don't know what they all mean. Oh. But, like, you know, because police, like, because it, it's the exchange of drugs. So she said so that... Without their blowing for a dollar. See what no, the serious so question they is. So bring 12 flowers and see what they come up uh, with. Can you give me the number? Of, <laughs> like, is there a legend we can find? So they, <laughs> this is screen. what is going on. And then, I mean, and she did it constantly. And it, they would, she was very cheap. So she would, she didn't pay for things. She had, coop, first of all, she would go to like these special places where, you know, and like she'd have like peppermint Oreos, you know, and like, like uh, green tea fig newtons and like, you know, vanilla pretzels, and so, because it was like some intern at Nabisco was like, let's try this, and then they'd give out free samples, and then they'd be like, this is disgusting, we're never doing this again. So she would get all of, like, the food <laughs> that never went to market, and that's what we had in the house, because it was free. Oh, no. And then she would buy food. <laughs> no, then she would buy groceries, like, at the dollar store, and then, like, take it to the pavilions and return it. And, like, get money from, like... Oh, um, so like, that was, Be like, how- I bought too many... Packs of potato chips. I don't need these. Can I return them? At like, but she'd buy like ten of them from the dollar store and then go to Ralph's or Pavilions or one of the places and return them. Like she bought them there. Oh man! And then she'd act so she was so weird. And I'm sure they like from a normal person they'd want a receipt, but they probably just didn't want to deal with her because she was like weird. So they'd be like, here, just take whatever you want and go. Yeah. Right. Or she'd do that thing at the movies, like she'd go into a movie that just cleared out and pick up a bag and a cup and then go up to the thing and say, my kid knocked this oh, over. Man. Can I have a... And they'd always... <laughs> you know? I mean, she knew every single trick. Yeah. Um, so, so she wasn't buying the drugs. So she was having the men bring the drugs and then the payment was her. But she'd put up these very inaccurate photos and often they wouldn't want the payment and then there was a whole situation. And I mean, it was... It was something. How long were you in that situation? About a year. Whoa. Whoa. It was a really nice (laughs) building. A really nice building. There was a pool. It was hard to give up. So what what was the final straw? Um, I'd say the final straw uh, was I went into her bathroom looking for something, looking for like a you know, like I needed some toothpaste or something, you know, and then I saw a little box on the uh, thing and it was crammed with my jewelry. Oh, man. Yeah, so she had stolen, was stealing stuff from me and and then I started really... Stole your bracelets? Yeah, yeah, right? Now that's crossing the line. Mm. (laughs) I thought you were going to say, like, a locket of your hair or something like that. No, well, here's here's, here's something creepy. Here's something very, very creepy. So she had this girlfriend, Bonnie, who I ended up becoming friends with and it was... She's like, oh, Bonnie, my best friend, Bonnie, my best friend, Bonnie, my best friend, my best friend. You know, she had pictures of Bonnie all over the place. And none of them together. Just, like, weird modeling shots of this girl. And um, 
and and I, I ended up meeting Bonnie because Bonnie lived in Vegas and then I was going to Vegas and she was like, you should call Bonnie. And I was like, okay. And I met her and I was like, so is Stephanie your best friend? And she's like, no. You know, I mean, like we're friendly. Like, you know, she's kind of an oddball, so I'm nice to her. But like, I certainly don't consider her my best friend. I, you know, right. So I, cause I'm like, Bonnie is either crazy or this is not what it looks like. You know what I mean? Cause no one would be, but it, the whole thing was odd. Right. So yeah. anyway. Um, she had an obsession with this girl, really pretty girl, really like normal, nice, cool girl. So one time, uh, I, I think I asked her for my t-shirt, I had this t-shirt that said New York, on, it was a New York on it, and uh, Bonnie was originally from New York, and I was looking for it, and I said, have you seen my shirt? I went into her room, and I said, have you seen my shirt? And then I looked, and it was on the bed, like on her bed, but kind of like in her bed, and she was like, this one? And I'm like yeah, why is it in your bed? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. She had been sleeping with it. And she goes, I thought it was Bonnie's. And I'm like, that's, that's uh, not any it. less weird. Like, that's, like, her excuse wasn't like, oh, I don't know why it's in my bed or it must have gotten in my laundry. It's like, oh, no, I was sleeping with it, but I didn't think it was yours. I just thought it belonged to this other girl that I'm obsessed with. Oh, uh, okay. You know, yeah, that's... Yeah, she was weird. She was weird on, on many, many levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and she had this great apartment because her aunt, who never had any children, um, left it to her and then left, like, a trust to take care of the maintenance and the taxes and all that. Oh, so, like, yeah. so it was all paid for. So she didn't really have any... She didn't have a job, but she didn't really need yeah, the money. Yeah, she had fun with all those little ways of making money. Right, and then she would also, like, you know, when I was paying rent to live in the extra bedroom, so that was kind of her income, and she didn't really need much more than that, so. Oh, damn. Now, you went through that weird situation. You went first, New York. You make the move. Mm -hmm. The boyfriend leaves you. you were the boyfriend there. comes back. Boyfriend comes back. Boyfriend breaks up again, then I write the play. Then you write the play. You made it to a film. Not yet. Oh, not yet. The play, the play I wrote a play. That was uh, really successful. It ran for 12 weeks in Hollywood in 2016. And then it went to Edinburgh in 2017. And it was performed internationally. And now I'm in the process of uh, developing it into a screenplay. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. That must feel accomplishing. It well, will when, it's, when it happens. Okay, yeah. I mean, right now it just feels like this constant upward climb. But what do you do? There you go. So yeah. That's the life in LA. It is. It's yeah. always a constant up, upward climb. But what I wanted to talk about the film was that you left New York mm -hmm. in order to pursue acting. Mm -hmm. But then you made it to a film where you were doing stand, stand up. up. I under know. Your own freaking name. You're not even a character. No. And you know what, Al? See, that's the thing, right? Okay. So my first job in LA was uh, Gary Marshall put me in a play. And it, he, so you, this is, um, this is crazy. So years and years ago, my mother lived in LA and she knew Gary Marshall and was in his first ever movie when he wasn't even directing. He was just like a producer, like a, like a low level producer. And he was a writer on the thing. Right. So she met him, knew him, hadn't seen him in a hundred million years. So I say, I want to move to LA. She goes, well, I have a phone number. He's the only person I know there. Maybe I'll take you to lunch or something. Right. So I call up this, leave this weird message that's like, I'm looking for Mr. Marshall. My mom is Kathleen. I don't know if he remembers her slash us slash, uh, I don't, uh, call me, don't call me, uh, get by. Like, you know, like it was awkward. Like, like what kind of message you leave for Gary Marshall? He doesn't know you, you know? So I leave this weird message and like very shortly after, I get this phone call. Hello? Because that's how he talks. <laughs> this is Gary Marshall from California. And I said, oh, I'm so glad it's not Gary Marshall from Poughkeepsie because that guy keeps calling and I was going to hang up. Like, what, who needs to, he didn't need to qualify where he was calling from. But, um, you know, bathroom. like he thinks nobody knows who he is, you know. So I said, um, well, hi, you know, and, and then he goes, Kathy has a kid and she's funny. Oh, no. So we start talking on the phone. And then he goes, I don't know what you look like. Can you send me a picture? And I said, well, I can send you. How about if I email? It, what's that? I'm old. I don't have a computer. I have a pencil 
and I have a mailbox that they check and they bring me the mail and but make sure you write G-A-R-R because my name has two R's and when people write one R they go this person doesn't fucking know him so <laughs> make sure two R very important the two R's and then he says my address and the address the numbers of the address add up to the number 13 which he made sure you'll remember it because if you add all the four numbers you get 13 because 13 is my lucky number and life can change on a dime and you gotta have luck on your side. So, oh. yeah. he's got a system. He's got a very. He won't have his address. Has to numbers have to be third. So anyway, whatever it, whatever his craziness is, it clearly worked for him, right? Yeah. So, so I send him the picture. He calls me back. I would have known you on the street. That face. You look like your mother. And I'm like, wow. So I guess he liked my mom. I mean, I, they haven't seen each other like forty years or something like that. I mean. I don't know what went down 40 years ago, but it must have been something. So we um, we start talking on the phone every day. Wow. I, really weird. Yeah. And we become, like, super close, talking on the phone every day. And um, when I come out, he says, you come, you read, we're doing a play, it's Neil Simon. The girl comes to L.A. I ought to be in pictures. So I read for the play, I get the job. Robert Wool, uh, you know who that is? No. He was a uh, Arliss on the TV show. And oh, okay. Oh, okay. So he is the other role. So he's the uh, the op- he plays opposite me. So I do this play with Robert Wool, and I, and it's a wonderful experience. I'm very close with Gary, and I actually I hadn't met him the first day that I got to do the audition. They sent all the other girls home. They told me to stay because they were going to read with the men. But I had time to kill, and I didn't even have a place to live yet, because I drove from New York right to the audition first. Whoa. So I went across to where his office was, and I said, uh, I went, they let me in, because they knew who I was. And I walked in, and he's sitting there, and he looks, like, old. But in my mind, I didn't realize how old he was going to, because in my mind, I think of, like, you know, I think of him in, like, well, I guess I knew he was old, but he just was, like, sitting at his desk, he's got his little glasses, and I said, hi, he goes, hi, and I said, you want to hang out? He goes, hang out, I, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm big in my field, I have things to do, and I was like, but I'm bored, and he's like, oh, what have I agreed to? So we ended up going to lunch together, and so we had this wonderful relationship with him, and when they were making Mother's Day, he loved that I did comedy. And he did not want me to stop doing comedy. He loved comedy. And um, I didn't really want to, like, stop. But I just, like, I wanted to be, like, a serious actor. You know? uh-huh. So I, I auditioned for the movie. And he goes, you're red good, but you're not right for the part. And I don't know if you've seen Mother's Day. There's, like, 8 million characters in that movie. So I said, which part? And he goes, any of the parts. <laughs> but I have a different idea. I think we're going to make the scene in a comedy club. And then we'll have a comic on the stage, and it'll be you, comedy! Right? So he writes in this whole scene where the action's all in a comedy club and puts me on the stage doing it. And then when I got to the set, they wanted, I went to the wardrobe, and they wanted to put me in, like, jeans and, you know, and they wanted me to look sort of almost gender neutral, right? And we took pictures and sent them. And then I get this call being like, Gary wants to see you in his trailer. I'm like, where's the trailer? I go find this trailer. It's the whole thing. And they go there. And he goes, bring me the flat thingy and the thing. And he looks at the thing. He goes, what the fuck is this? You don't dress like this. You like red. And I'm like, well, I did this what they told me. He goes, they don't know. I want you. I don't want comedian. I want you. So I said, okay. He goes, do you have a red dress? And I said, I do. He goes, you wear that. And then he yelled out, someone's out wardrobe. No one else wear red. It was very cool. Damn. So that was my story of why I did stand up in the movie. That is awesome. And that movie, Jason Sudeikis is on it. Mm-hmm. Jennifer. Jennifer Aniston. Aniston. Um, who else? Kate Hudson. You got to hang out with Julia them? Roberts. I didn't hang out with them. I did hang out a lot with John Lovitz. Oh, that's which cool. was very that was really exciting for me. He now, played. Did, did they write the jokes for you, or did you? No, no, no. Okay. It was all it was all mine. Yeah, they wanted me doing my own material, and they used my own name and everything. What? Yeah, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, but what was funny was that, like I go in there, they really like they acted like I was somebody, you know. Like <laughs> I get there, and I'm the writers and the producers are all there, and I said, oh, like thank you guys so much, and they're like, well, thank you, we're so glad that you were available. I'm like. 
<laughs> I don't know what you people think I do all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they're That's so awesome. glad that I was available. They're like, we're so glad we can get And I was like, well, hopefully I'll be funny. And we're like, well, you are. I'm like, oh my God, you watch my clips? Like, what have you seen? <laughs> you know? Like, I'm all like, oh God, like, what? I don't even know what's out there, right? So, um, so it's the day that we're about to shoot, and they're being so cavalier about this because the, one of the writers pulls me aside. He's like, oh, hey, oh, are you about to do something? And I'm like, well, I was just going to go get a soda. And he's like, oh, oh, go do that. And I'm like, well, wait, no, did you mean, did you need me? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, we just wanted to maybe go over your jokes with you. But you, do your thing first. I'm like, we're sh- shooting my scene in like 15 minutes. If you want to go over it, we should probably, like, my soda can wait, you know? So we sat there and I said, well, I think that I was going to say this joke and this joke. And they're all like. <laughs> and I'm like, and then I thought, well, I'd open with this. And then, you know, because it's Mother's Day, I thought I'd end on, on this. And they're like, good, very good. Very good, it's funny. And I'm like, is it? Because, like, I thought it was, and now I'm not so sure. <laughs> but, you know, it's writer brain. You know, they're not they're not, yeah, they're, they're not in, like, enjoy it mode. They're in, like, will that work? Is that funny? Like, it's, yeah. you know, they're like, it's good. It's good. Very funny. Yeah. No, that'll work. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, right before really you don't, go on. Right before I go on, I'm like, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it really brings you back down. Like, they were, the... yeah. Like, there wasn't even a smile. It was like, a, let's, that will work. Yes. Good. Funny. That's mm-hmm. efficient. Funny. Well, I wish we had so many much more time to so many much more much more. much more more time. That's what happens when you're Puerto Rican. You just invent words and phrases like Is that. Is that what happens when you're Puerto that's, Rican? That's what happens. And Shakespeare. Clear. Yeah. I can't wait to learn uh, Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Oh. But how can people find you, Genevieve? Oh, I'm not so hard to find. Um, I am on. Uh, I am on. I'm on. Facebook, Twitter, all those. But I love Instagram. That's Instagram. the, yeah. That's your go-to spot. Probably, yeah. I love Instagram at CatfightJoy. I do have Twitter. Every now and then I open it. Um, CatfightJoy. C-A-T-F-I-G-H. Like a cat fight and then joy. It's not so hard, right? Oh, Probably the best. I also have a website, JenevieveJoy.com, um, that has all more information, video stuff upcoming if you want to know about me. That's probably the best way. Go check her out. And Christina wanted to tell you something about uh, the show. Oh, yeah. I thought you were set last night. It was really good. Oh, my God. You were there? Yeah. Oh! I was the one taking the pictures on the show. Oh! I didn't even put that together. Well, thank you. Literally on the drive back, I was like, who are your top three comedians? She's like, I like that one that did all the voices. That was, like, one of my favorites. Would that be me? Yeah, Yeah. that was you. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even realize I'm doing it. (laughs) <laughs> well, oh, because I was doing the French lady and the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah she was like, that French accent was great. <laughs> right, really that's so funny. I was the French one. Yeah, oh, yeah. good. Well, I'm glad you liked it because that was new. I've oh, never, cool. like, um, I haven't really talked about that. But it's funny. Every time I do material, like, about little kids, it always kills. It's it's kind of, it never fails. Yeah, I think it was your little kid's voice that was, like, cracking me up a lot. Right, Because I bet yeah. he was, like... This gremlin child. <laughs> yeah, they're all—they all are. They're all gremlins and perverts. Every last one of them. Babysit in the morning and then comedy at night. There you go. I do. I babysit in the afternoon. Yeah, I do. And and I'm like, my life is just like crawling with children. My sister is five, and oh man, you know, so yeah. And then and then I. Would you want any children? Do I want any? Children? You know, it's a question because I'm at that I'm at that age where I'm getting that question. Do you get the question? Uh, I no, but people around me do. <laughs> really? No, 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 it's 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 so. I think that I, at least in my world, this is like the second wave of people getting pregnant again. Oh, and again? Like again. they all either did it like right out of high school? Yeah, a lot of them did it right out of high school, and now and I'm the seeing, ones like, that didn't. Work I go to my Facebook feed, and it's like everybody else is now getting pregnant. Well, here's what's crazy to me. Somebody said this to me once. Like I was like, ah. Oh. My friends, I was in college, and I was saying, you know, like, oh, it's going to be so weird when, like, people start getting married. She was like, wait till they start getting divorced. Oh, man. Then you <laughs> feel, like, old. And it's happening. I'm waiting I got, <laughs> I got two, my two, two of my girlfriends, like, I'm thinking, like, all the people that are married that I know, that got, because I don't have a lot of married friends, because most of my friends are comedians and artists and stuff, and they don't, we just kind of... It's hard to manage we, we mess up. stuff. We, we fuck that <laughs> up, you know? But, um... Yeah, two two of them are divorced. One's divorced, one's divorcing. Yeah. Um, t- oh, I skipped. I, I missed. The, I, I I didn't really answer that question. In theory, yeah. You know, I think I could do one. I think that's what I think I want. Like, cause like I I, I babysit these two, right? 
And I get that, like... One kid or one dog? One kid. Okay. One kid. Like, they... Like, I babysit these two kids, and they... They're very, like, loving with each other or whatever, but I don't really like the dynamic of both. It irritates me. I'm like, uh, 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 and then I'm like with this one, and then this one gets upset, and then it's like... Because, like, the boy's really smart, mm. and the girl's really cute, and that sounds awful but like the girl the boy is like he's brilliant but he's like not that cute but he doesn't need to be cute because he's like so brilliant and interesting and like the girl is like the polar opposite like she's really not that smart but she doesn't need to be because she's gorgeous and she's she's like sexy she's like six but she's like and you're just like oh my god what just this energy that's coming at me like i just want more of it like she's amazing right so if the things that come out of her mouth are like semi, like it's okay because no one's even listening because they're just so enthralled with how like magnificent she is, right? She's one of those. So, I, I, but like I want to like talk about philosophy with this 10 year old mm. and then the, the little, <laughs> then the girl is just like, but I'm over here and I'm like, oh, you're gorgeous. And then, and then I'm pulled and then he, and I, I don't like it. It's, it's, <laughs> and then he starts trying to get my attention. I, I just don't like the dynamic. Like for me, like. I love it when it's like, oh, the one's gone and I have the one. Like, I'm great with the one. Yeah. My sister, like, she had her daughter, Kaylee, and then she had all these more people. Just kept showing more up. More people. Just all these people. And I'm like, you know, I would have been good with Kaylee. Like, I would have been good. We could have just stopped. Mm -hmm. The boy's cute. He's, but he's a shit now. So, you know what? Forget it. He was great at two. At two years old. Boys at two years old are the cutest. They're so loving. They're great. Then they're little shits. Like, after, after, like, by 10, I hate, like, a 10-year-old boys, I want to punch them in the throat. I can't stand little boys. But, like, little girl, ugh. Like, I think, yeah, I think one. I think I want one, and I think I want it to be a girl. And I think that by the time I'm ready, it's all going to be artificial anyway. <laughs> and I'm going to, like, I think we can manip gen gen genetic. Yeah, yeah, they're you know doing what that mean? now. Right. Yeah. You know? Or, like, even if I get a boy at this point, I can... Maybe you'll tweak it, change its mind. You know, like yeah, yeah. yeah. I want <laughs> right? smart. I want it. Yeah, it's it's a toss up. At, like even if I you mean, get a girl, it may not want to be a girl in the end now because that's you know. So yeah, you, you get what you get, right? Yeah. But yeah, and I think I I think I could do one. I think I'd really enjoy it. Is that selfish? Like I don't know. It's a preference, and you know you can have preferences, right? Yeah. Like it's gonna have, have it. only child. Like it's <laughs> you, have a, you have a goal to start okay. with, and when you get there, you're like ah, oh, okay, I'll, I'll settle. Yeah, like or, I <laughs> feel like it's gonna have like a big extended family anyway, which will all be on the East Coast. But I think if you go to casual encounters, you probably get lucky. You know. So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> all right. Anyways, guys, it's been Genevieve Joy. Go ahead and follow her. She's been amazing. She's also going to be in more stuff here. So stay tuned. I've been Steve Des. That's Christina Cropper. I'm Christina Cropper. We're Dream Press Productions. See you on the next one. Bye. Bye. That was great. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you. We got so many